In Shadow of the Conqueror, you can fall off the edge of the world, and after a day of falling, you'll land right back where you started. I'm Chris Horst, and today we're going to be looking at the science of Everfall. Shadow of the Conqueror is a story that asks, what if Stalin and Genghis Khan had a baby, and that baby was as evil as both of them, and took over the entire world, and then was reborn? Could such an evil person have a chance at redemption? The book doesn't answer that question, but leaves it up to the interpretation of the readers. The author, Shad Brooks, has his own YouTube channel where he talks about everything medieval and fantasy. He was one of my biggest influences for starting this channel. I'm also writing a book, a science fiction book, and seeing how he used YouTube to grow a following before releasing his book, I thought I might try it too. One more excuse to get on YouTube and talk about things I love. What we're going to talk about today is the universe of Everfall. It is a closed universe, which means if you fall off the edge of the world, you'll eventually land back where you started. The continents and floating islands float because they contain a mineral called darkstone, which is frozen in space. I've calculated how big North America would look if it were in the world of Everfall. And so terminal velocity of a human for a day, and North America would look three times the size of the sun. Now what Shad has done is at the bottom of the universe, there's a boundary. And at the top of the universe, there's another boundary. And when you reach one of the boundaries, you teleport up to the other boundary and continue to fall. That's not how an actual closed universe would be though. I happen to have a closed universe here with me right now. You can see it has some things in it, some shapes. And if you start at one of the shapes and you travel forward, you go and you go and you go until you end up back where you started. Now you look at this and you think, this is a cylinder. It's, it, you're not actually going in a straight line, you're going in a circle, right? Well, no, actually, because if you, if you look at this universe as a flat universe, that's mathematically the same to a cylindrical universe. Now, you think, okay, this universe ends on the right side and the left side, but no, that's not the idea. The, the idea is that the left side and the right side are the same side. They are the same point, just like, this line down the middle of the pentagon and itself are the same line. This edge and this edge are the same line. And these shapes, the circle and this triangle, they're not split. They're still connected. They're still individual shapes. So a realistic closed universe would have no boundary. It would simply be a loop. Suppose there were no boundary in Everfall, and it really was a looping universe in the topological sense. What would that change about the universe? The first thing that comes to mind is that the size of a closed dimension is not fixed. It can change, and it changes based on the gravity, specifically a balance of regular gravity and dark energy, which is a real thing. It's what causes the universe to expand and we have no idea what it is. If the regular gravity is stronger, then the dimension is gonna collapse down to whatever quantum gravity does. If dark energy is stronger, then it's going to expand and keep expanding. This is unstable. If it's nudged even the tiniest bit in either direction, it's gonna run away until it hits one of the extremes. But suppose that the answer was figured out and somehow the size of the closed dimension is fixed. What else would we expect to happen? What about the air pressure? In Shad's book, the air is like the air on Earth. The farther down you go, closer to the lower boundary, the higher the air pressure, and the closer to the upper boundary, the lower the air pressure. You know, considering how much taller this universe is than the Earth's atmosphere, if it's breathable up at the top, the air pressure at the continent must be like the bottom of the ocean. Another question, would the air fall? I contemplated this question for quite a while because it's like, you know, constant air pressure, maybe it would just stay level with the continent. But then I remembered the gravity acceleration gauge equivalence. Gravity 
and acceleration are the same thing, basically. So the continent that stays fixed with gravity is the same as a continent which constantly accelerates upward with no gravity. A constantly upward accelerating continent would be moving upward relative to the air around it. So a static continent in gravity would have air flowing down all around it faster and faster and faster until the continent is on fire because it's going through the air so fast and this, this rush of air all around it would tear it to pieces until it just disintegrates and all that's left is a bunch of dark stone speeding through the world, getting hotter and faster until it lights the atmosphere on fire. So it's probably for the best that Shad put a boundary into his world. <laughs> Although there still would be an erosion problem in this world with the boundary. As rocks break off the edge of the world and fall down, hit the world and knock some more rocks off, which then fall down and, and then there's, there's rocks from the middle that break off at the bottom and fall down. And uh, I assume these people have like super reinforced roofs to protect from falling rocks. And so eventually over millions of years, even in a universe with a boundary, the continent is going to be eroded down to a bunch of perpetually falling rocks and a bunch of dark stone hovering there. So if this civilization continues on for that long, they're gonna have to do some serious mega engineering to keep their world alive. Although since it's fantasy, they'll probably have some kind of Armageddon recreation of the world, I don't know, something. You know, come to think of it, they could tie a rope to a rock and chuck it off the edge and have basically unlimited energy, which would, uh, which would, uh, which would, uh, Chad, I broke your economy. Anyway, that's my take on the science of Everfall. If that was interesting, then I highly recommend reading the book Shadow of the Conqueror. It's a very good book. It's a very original fantasy story. And if you go to Shadowversity to watch him, tell him I sent you. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone you think would be interested. I'll see you next time.